Well, here we are. It's Friday, and uh, what's the date? Uh, August 26th, and this is the weekly video. We're going to take a look and see what's been going on in the uh, Asian art market. A few things I wanted to talk about, about what we've been up to over here for the last week. Uh, one of the things uh, is that many of you know, we, we did a uh, video, we released it last night, on the uh, the life of Elias Haskett Derby, the uh, famous China tradesman, sailor, uh, pirateer, privateer, uh, you name it, very colorful guy, uh, had an absolutely amazing life, and uh, uh, we went through it uh, to some de detail. I hope it wasn't too much for you. Um, um, I, I, I tend to get into the weeds sometimes, so that, uh, I went into the weeds pretty deep on that one. But at any rate, it, I, th I think it came out all right, and uh, I, I was able to gather up some good images to sort of paint the picture. And uh, it was fun to do. It was fun to do, and I think we're going to be doing more of these every couple of weeks. Uh, they take a lot of time to prepare, um, uh, get, gathering up the uh, information, multiple sources, and all that. We got to verify stuff before we say it. And uh, but it was interesting. Uh, it was a really interesting thing, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that. Uh, Let's see here. Um, we added, uh, those who use the global pages, we added this week's uh, videos already up, um, went up this morning. And uh, these are the previous videos. If, you, if you're a new subscriber, uh, we noticed we had a number of new subscribers this week. Uh, go through and uh, go back a bit. There's around 20 or 25 uh, videos on there uh, that aren't on here uh, that we make for the, uh, the, the subscription service. And uh, we went through some upcoming sales, some interesting sales coming up, actually, and uh, went into them in a little bit of detail. Uh, and uh, I hope you, hope you uh, take, take a minute to look at them um, and uh, go along with that. And what else is going on? Oh, um, uh, on the global pages, uh, the USA page um, had to be uh, replaced uh, because of software updates. So if you went to use it in the last uh, half, uh, half day or so, you probably noticed that it wasn't loading fully. And uh, we fixed that. It's all set. And uh, on we go. And the next thing I wanted to mention was um, uh, we added the uh, Christie's on the, on the, uh, on the uh, catalog section on the site um, over here. Um, this week we added the Christie's catalog uh, the, for the upcoming sale. Here it is, Important Chinese Works of Art. There's some nice things in there. We'll be doing a video on that next week probably. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna set aside a morning and go through and lay it out and see if we can't do something with it. It's a, there's some interesting things in there, um, and it's got, this is really gonna be a test to the market. And I think there's a lot of apprehension right now about about where the Chinese art market is going, um, and uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a, a good long look at it. Uh, I think in the next year or two you might have some opportunities to buy things if you're a collector at uh, lesser prices than what you've been maybe uh, stuck with paying um, during the last couple of years just because uh, China is very rattled right now the economy over there um, uh, you don't read much about it but in the news but if you look at um, uh, some, some of the other some of the sites on YouTube that cover China what's going on there um, you'll get a much better picture of the reality of it the, the as, we, as you know that the Chinese government is not quick to admit that they have huge problems while they do and uh, they've got a big banking problem in particular and a real estate crash and um, a lot going on. And uh, um, I think they're going to be dealing with some pretty high rates of inflation pretty soon if they're not already. So uh, that'll, that'll be interesting. All right. But the catalog is great. The stuff is fabulous at the, uh, uh, that's coming up. And I noticed that uh, Skinner's, as, uh, now that they're owned by Bonhams, um, it looks like that maybe they've got some better things. I think maybe um, Bonhams has been um, helping them get some things. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and we're going to, we'll take a look. We'll re probably review that sale. I'm hoping Skinner's can get their act together with their new owners. That's what I'm hoping for. And I hope Bonham's can, uh, hasn't spread themselves too thin because as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, they, we, we had to sort of demote them on the report card just because of that, uh, a couple of sales they've been running, particularly in the, at Sydney, um, where they're putting together very sloppy, um, auctions, frankly. And, uh, um, it, it, it's a bit ridiculous. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, uh, the other things that are going on, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One of them is uh, a sale that's coming up, and we've had some inquiries on it through the identification assistant thing um, on, 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 on the Bitamount site the, where people send in images and ask us what we think. Morningstar um, eArt Group 
in Cary, North Carolina, has got a sale coming up, and they've they've done what a lot of these auction houses are doing. And I'm only saying this in case you're looking at it and you think, oh, this is amazing. All these pieces are fakes, from what I can see. Uh, the paperwork isn't worth the. They've got documents and all this stuff making it look sort of official, and uh, uh, the objects are all reproductions. So I don't quite know what they're trying to do there, other than skin you out of your money, uh, from what I'm seeing. And uh, this, of course, is my opinion of them. And uh, there is this sort of extensive, uh, badly written um, uh, uh, <laughs> a paragraph under each lot going in, throwing around a lot of names of people, famous people, locations in China and all this. But, uh, but if you read it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. So um, uh, stay away from that auction, okay? And Charlotte's down in uh, Florida has another one of their um, uh, fake sales coming up, too. Um, uh, we had a couple of inquiries of people from there. Uh, this is more of that sale in the Carolinas, again, you know, uh, with all these extremely rare pieces of copies. Um, Charlotte's has a sale coming up, again, where they're, they're uh, using names of famous people and provenance and Zhang Daquan and all this sort of stuff. It's all nonsense. Um, the, the, the pieces are all uh, reproductions, so stay away from that. The other thing I wanted to mention was, and this is because it's happened um, six or eight times in the last week, uh, there seems to be a flood of Daoguan bowls onto the market. Many of you have seen them, um, uh, uh, th these kinds of bowls. Uh, in particular with these these surfaces and they either use scrofato grounds or just uh, solid monochrome colors here um, and w I just went through quickly through live auctioneers and found a, a pile of them um, these are all reproductions and they're turning up for some reason the the, the, the forges in in China um, have have landed on Dao Guan they, 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 they bled the Guangxu market to death with all the copies, they, they bled the Kangxi market, they bled the Qin Lung market, they've gone after the Song and Giware and Guanware and made loads of copies of those legendarily. Um, and uh, the transitional wares, they were focusing on those for a while because they were, they're selling for more and more money. Um, we've had still getting inquiries from people looking at these transitional vases. A transitional pot, pot this way, by the way, just this week I saw in one auction, uh, it was a fake and it sold for I think 30 or 40 thousand dollars. So. Uh, they're getting better and better at those. And now these Dao Guan bowls are turning up, especially the ones with the enamel dexterities with these round L's and then blue and white interiors. This seems to be sort of a, a color combination that they're going after. And the, these are modern copies. These are uh, reproductions from what I've seen. Um, here's, a, here's another one with uh, sort of a, a, a ruby ground, um, um, total fake. Uh, the, the workmanship on them is, is when you examine the elements, always look at the elements, um, uh, is just absolutely mediocre. Uh, but uh, I, I got a feeling some people are going to go for them. And uh, because it, people aren't used to seeing copies of Dalguan bowls. Here's another one, four to four to eight thousand uh, dollars. Who's who's the person? Jumbo Auctions in San Gabriel. Um, they get an F on the report card on the Bitmouth site. And again, you have another one with the. Uh, ubiquitous blue interior um, and this is the kind of thing these are turning up everywhere and this is just a warning if you see here's another one with a yellow exterior and a blue interior here we have it uh, a reproduction and who's selling this one this is amazing auctions in Ontario Canada so you can see they're going from California to to, to, color, to, to Canada to and everywhere in between of course our friends down in uh, southern Georgia will probably no doubt have some if they haven't already I haven't gone through and looked uh, they had a sale of fakes at uh, Roswell last week and they actually sold things so there you go uh, and then there's this one. Uh, this is a, a green enamel dragon bowl with a Daoguan mark, no, a Blaine interior. And this is Mercis Gallery in Great Neck, New York. Um, again, you have, they have sort of a long disclaimer regarding condition and what the piece is. Um, uh, no responsibility for anything. They're not dating it. They're just saying Ching Daoguan mark. Um, and they're, they're leaving it up to you to make up your mind. Uh, so so they, they, it's important to keep track of what's trending as far as fakes goes. Um, um, I'm still seeing, we're still seeing regularly uh, fakes of uh, very rare types of you know, lime green ground uh, 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 chin lung marked vases turning up. Uh, they're getting better and better. And uh, one of the things I'm noticing, though, is that they're really paying a lot of attention to the foot rims. 
and finding ways to make them look like the originals. Uh, looks like they're, they've actually taken to adding rusty water to the, to, the, to the unglazed paste before it fires, so it creates that uh, iron oxide area. But it looks like it's been painted on, and, and, uh, but in time, I think they'll get better and better at it. And uh, it, uh, so, so watch out, <laughs> watch out. Uh, it's pretty terrifying, okay? Now, uh, what was going on this week? There we go. This was over on uh, eBay. Uh, there weren't a lot of big sales finishing up. There's a couple of good sales that are on, on the global pages. There weren't any big sales that finished up in the last week, really. Uh, I just wanted to throw out there that there are. Uh, there's a big sale coming up tomorrow of really, really fine uh, Chinese export wares on the U.S. page. Uh, check that out. And um, uh, another sale turned up from an auction house in New York, uh, and we've just added it today, of uh, some stupendous uh, Chinese export wares, all, mostly all 18th century animal forms, uh, 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 candles, candle holders, and that kind of thing. So uh, it's worth looking. All right. Now, on eBay last week, um, we had this. This was uh, we had this on the uh, on the newsletter page over on Bitamount. It was this rather nice, um, uh, uh, pro probably Ming Dynasty uh, uh, cup on stand with rue heads. Had a few bends in it um, on the on the rim, but this is a nice old one. Good deep undisturbed patina, and it wasn't a big piece. This was actually quite a small delicate piece. It was around four or five inches, uh, but beautifully done. And somebody picked it up, I think, pretty reasonably. Six hundred and twenty dollars with the lid. Um, the, the lid is, is not original to it, of course, that was added, uh, but the bottom of it looks pretty good. And um, the uh, decoration, uh, the dragon and, and, and all that stuff is very nice on this. This is a nice old bronze, legitimate as can be. And uh, the lid originally had, if you notice, the top of it looks a little barren up here. And because originally there was probably a finial of some kind. Often they used a, a, a little piece of jade or a piece of agate or something like that. And um, often if it's a good piece of jade, it'll get removed and they'll sell that separately these days. Uh, that was because back in the day, uh, they used to use um, bits and heads off of jade figures and, and jadeite figures to use as finials. If the body of the piece was damaged, they would just uh, re rework it onto a lid uh, as, as an accessory. All right. Now, um, let's see here. Click this one. And then there was this. This was the ivory uh, finial, uh, the, the fitting that went on to, would have gone onto a fan um, uh, down here, there, right in this spot here. It sold nicely done with these little double gourd devices. Ended up going for $293, which I think was a perfectly reasonable buy. This was a nicely carved thing, 19th century, and uh, it looked to be in good shape. And obviously it had been stripped off of something and saved, thankfully. Somebody hung on to it. And then over here was the uh, lot of uh, five bowls. These are all early bowls. All of these were uh, 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 Sung to possibly Yuan Dynasty. Uh, they, the whole lot went for $731, which I think was a pretty good buy. This was an interesting study lot. Um, a number of different types of bowls. Uh, some nice darkened, uh, these brown celadons that they used to make at the provincial kilns and so forth. Uh, a perfectly good lot. And uh, five pieces for $731 was a great buy. The same seller had a bunch of other things, some Annemese looking things and so forth. Those were all modern, but he didn't misrepresent them. Um, he, he called them vintage, which is, of course, a euphemism for brand new, but um, uh, or, or fairly new. Uh, relatively speaking, but but these were good. These were perfectly fine, and I think somebody got a nice buy. I think these were a good buy. I think if you broke them up and sell them, you'd probably make a profit. All right, and then over here to this, this was one of the little bargains of the week. A pair of Kang Shi dishes, um, about eight inches in diameter each. Uh, these were pretty nice. Um, a well-known palette. This one was with a with the uh, dark blue uh, cobalt uh, underglazed background with these. Uh, these lappets coming out. And I kind of like the way they had two of them that were done in blue with gold um, um, and then sort of dividing the plate uh, uh, to the upper and lower sections there. So they had these blue panels uh, coming coming into it. And there was also uh, this, the uh, the bowl with the basket in the middle. And this was a, a pattern, of course. Um, I, I, it kind of annoys me. They put the... Uh, 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 
let's see if this is a better image. There we go. Uh, this this basket pattern you see a lot on on Qinlong in particular uh, pieces. They did they did have it in the Kangxi period, obviously, because here it is. But it, it became more and more popular during the Qinlong period, and the the basket of flowers motif uh, became rather uh, successful. And uh, I like the way the flowers are done on this. They're sort of loosely painted and sort of floating on the rim. Um, there was a small chip on the edge of it, but somebody bought both pieces for $105 and 20, well, from, from the UK to here, there was a London dealer that had it. Uh, the shipping to, to, to me here was just, uh, in Gloucester, Massachusetts, was just uh, 19 pounds, 20, $23, which I think was very reasonable, whoever the seller is, he's being very good about that. So that was a pretty good thing. And uh, this robe, it was a, a, a small robe, an informal robe with dragons on it. Um, late 19th century, late Qing, uh, but nicely done. Nice gold, uh, this this warm cocoa brown ground. Um, good looking uh, uh, colors at the bottom. I don't see a lot of fading. All these floating uh, uh, clouds and so forth. Uh, nicely done um, with uh, with these gilt uh, thread, gold thread dragons on it. Um, these this was a good looking thing. The colors still look quite good. The blue is nice and strong. The red is strong still. And the reds the reds and the yellows are like the first to fade. And they didn't fade on this yet, which is rather miraculous. And uh, here's here's the end of it. Uh, the sleeves might have been altered at some point, but uh, other than that, it's a pretty good looking rope. And uh, somebody picked it up for fourteen hundred and seventy-five dollars, which I think is a bit under the money. Um, um, you know, we've seen these in the past, and they sell for anywhere from oh uh, two to thirty-five hundred dollars, two thousand to thirty-five hundred. So somebody picked this one up for fourteen seventy-five, and it may also be because it's the end of the summer, and and there's a lot going on right now that might throw people off a little. And then there was this: these uh, four panels of uh, dragon panels. Uh, of, see, it looks like a throne cover or something, but uh, or an assembled throne cover. But th three very nice uh, pieces of silk um, with with very attractively done dragons in different positions. Um, uh, it, it looks perfectly good, and I don't see any uh, real damage anywhere. It looks like it's in fairly good condition um, um, all the way around. And uh, somebody somebody picked this lot up, I think, for a fairly reasonable price, nine hundred and ten dollars, or about three hundred dollars a panel. Um, and that in today's silk market is a good buy. And this was a, a this is a seller out in California, um, a San Francisco collector. He's fairly new to eBay, but in the last few um, um, months he's had some decent things. So I, I I don't know if he's got a collection he's he's selling that's his, or he's gotten into a, a collection, or what the story is. But he seems to uh, be pretty good. He seems to have a pretty good eye on things. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of pleased to see that. Because you don't see a lot of new sellers coming onto eBay these days with good things. All right, and then over here to this, this was the pair of Guangxu marked uh, or or or, or, or um, uh, Zhenfeng marked bowls, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Zhenfeng or. or so forth. Uh, I don't think they were period. I think these were later. I think these were probably Republic bowls. But they were nicely done. They had the wax export stamps on them, of course, uh, typically is a sign that they're probably Republic period in a lot of pieces because they, they were very restrictive about what got shipped out of the country. But uh, nicely done. Nicely done. Nice cobalt decoration. Good looking. Um, I just don't uh, think that those are uh, uh, authentic marks. Um, you know what I'll do? We'll, why don't we uh, just check that for a second? All right. Yeah. Now they're, they're, I, I just gave them another quick look. I didn't want to bore everybody. Um, they, they have shut bang marks on them, but the, the the fact is is that there's very very few bowls were ever made. Porcelains were ever made with the bang marks. But a lot of them were done in the Republic period. That's simple. Um, um, we have a page on the Bitamut site, I think, with uh, it's devoted to marks, sort of an orientation, looking at marks, how to look at them. And uh, I think it took us a week to find three mark and three Shenfeng um, uh, marked uh, porcelains that we could put on there, and they were all sold by um, either uh, Christie's or Sotheby's handled them. And uh, that was over the course of ten years. I think we found three of them. So shows you how rare they are. So if you, whenever you see this mark, uh, just automatically assume they're probably Republic period. All right, and somebody paid nineteen hundred and twenty-five dollars for them. And then over to this, the um, uh, Jadeite Guan Yin figure. We talked about this last week. This was a nice one, well carved, probably late Qing or Republic period, but beautifully carved, no damage to it. It was around eight or so inches tall, in good condition, 
uh, pleasing colors. And I, I, I was absolutely amazed that the, the, these these delicate tips and things hadn't been broken at some point. Uh, this did not appear to be a contemporary carving to me, and apparently it didn't to other people. Ended up selling for twelve hundred twenty five dollars, which is a little more than I thought it would bring. But I'm glad it brought it because it was a nice thing. You know, it was nine inches tall. It wasn't a great big one, but it was good looking. Uh, it had had a nice surface to it. And uh, this was a, 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 a seller I've not seen before, uh, Nostalgiana. And I'm going to bet that person sells jewelry or other things and happened to get them up with a decent piece of jade. But anyway, they did a good job selling it and got a good description out there. So there you go. And then on to this, the uh, Lunquan Celadon Bowl. Um, it was just a nice bowl. There's nothing wrong with it. If, if, if you, you know, It's not the best one that ever come on the market, of course, but it's a, not a bad one. And the decoration looked okay on it. The, the glaze looked pretty good on it. Um, I, I, I couldn't see anything to, to dislike about it. Um, let's see if we get it to blow up a little. The laptop's acting up today. It's, it's having trouble loading pages. Maybe the weather. I think we're about to get an enormous thunderstorm, from what I just heard. Uh, it's coming in off the ocean. So we'll see what happens. There we go. It's a little better. Well, for some reason, this one is not opening. Sometimes the completed sales don't open the way they should anyway. Uh, but the wear on the plate, the scratches all look okay. Uh, look, they all look like natural uh, surface abrasions. And uh, the color is pretty good. And uh, somebody picked it up for $1,556. That's not a bad buy. That's a, that's a pretty good buy for one of these. It was a charger. It was over 12 inches. It's 33 centimeters, which is uh, around, uh, oh, it's around 14 inches in diameter. So it's pretty nice. All right, and that was sort of it for the week. There's a lot of stuff on the on the newsletter page that hasn't sold yet, about half of it. And uh, one of the sellers is uh, Josh Chamberlain, uh, Juice1499. He, he threw a sale on uh, Friday after last week's uh, video came out. And uh, we, we caught up with it over the weekend and decided to uh, add it to the pages. They're on there right now. A lot of you, a lot of you uh, saw them. Um, but uh, here they are. This is this a nice little pair of snuff bottles? Uh, uh, nicely decorated, late Qing, second half of the 19th century from what I'm seeing. Uh, but but uh, charming with these immortals on it. Uh, it's up to uh, $236. It should it should get up in the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. So those are pretty nice. And it's a pair and it's a pair of snuff bottles and they're decorated, so it makes them interesting. All right, and then moseying along. Over here, here we go. Uh, was is this vase a uh, very nice Mandarin vase? Uh, uh, probably made around 1840. Uh, nice, nice size. Good. You can tell how big it is, but it's next to the Poland Spring bottle there. Uh, but but nicely done. Good good color. Good strong colors actually. The colors are very vibrant on it, and the uh, Greek key border around the outside is in nice condition. I don't see a lot of wear to it. You always want to check the gilding for wear and check the enamels for wear because you you you, you know you 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 don't know what kind of a life the thing has had. And uh, this one looks like it's had a pretty good life. It looks like they took good care of it. And I like the scenes at the bottom, those cartouches with uh, uh, with uh, figures in, inside of a house or in, in, a, in a sort of in the presence of somebody seated, not in a throne, but he looks like sort of an official person. And uh, I like that. That's nice. Should get up there, should get up to the 1000 to $1,500 range from what I'm seeing. Um, uh, the rest of the page didn't load. Okay, here it is. It's loading slowly. Everything's loading slowly today. I'm not sure why. There we go. Uh, how tall is this thing? 25 inches tall. Oh, that's a big vase. It should bring, uh, I thought I thought it was a little smaller than that. Uh, 25 inches, that should bring 1800 to $2,500. Or 1500 to 2000 somewhere in that range. And over here, this is another lot that's up there. This is one of those uh, retrofitted desk sets, um, uh, either by Farmer or Yamanaka or one of those companies. And this was, of course, something that they did back then, especially in New York and Boston, um, where they would take old bits of uh, Chinese jade and then work them into desk sets for uh, use in a Western home. And th these are pretty nice. This is a, these are all uh, look like all late Qing, early Republic period jades, jadeite, birds and that nice uh, uh, bracelet on there. And I suspect that bracelet's not dyed. Some of these jade bracelets, as you know, are dyed. They, they add green to them because it makes them more attractive. But this set looks too old to have had that done to it. And uh, I like the standish that it's on. It's good looking. 
has a has a, a couple of stands that are uh, carved Chinese stands that go with the birds. And you have that little little uh, jade bead, and uh, nicely done. And it's up to two hundred and three dollars. These all close on Monday, by the way, and uh, that should get up to the you know up to the thousand thirteen hundred dollar range somewhere in there. It's rather elegant, rather. If you got French furniture, it would look nice with it, I think. Um, a little a little a little Louis the Sixteenth furniture, and I think you'd. You'd have something, put that put that on top of it. I think it would be terrific. And uh, let's see here. And on to this. This is the uh, another thing that Josh has up. I, I like this a lot. I like Kung Shi porcelains, as do many of you. This is a good looking jar. It's about eight and a half inches tall. It's got a later cover and stand, uh, probably uh, from the you know early 20th century, somewhere in there. And, and again, it's one of these lids that originally had something on there, probably a piece of jade or bronze, something that got stripped off uh, during its life. Maybe maybe somebody just liked it. Maybe it got lost. Who knows? Uh, but at any rate, this is a good-looking jar. Good, good cobalt color. Nicely done foot rim. Very neatly trimmed. Very dense. Uh, very dense paste around the top. Uh, beautifully trimmed out. Uh, good little jar. Good little jar with uh, precious objects on it. Here you have those long-legged incense burner and a goo form vase with peacock feathers coming out of it. Pretty popular motif that they use cash symbols on the sides and Buddha symbols here and here. Uh, very nicely done, very good looking, good looking piece of porcelain. Uh, it's up to about $1,000, 1150 and it should bring two to 3000 2500 to 3000 by the time it's done, maybe a little bit more, but uh, nice looking piece, nice looking example. And uh, then over here, he's got a couple of very good pieces of lacquer. If you buy China Trade lacquer, you want to pay attention because these are nice. These are really nice. Uh, this is a hanging panel, um, a beautifully done, very fine detail, lots of lots of imagery on it, activities, people moving around, nice facial expressions. Um, here you have it, uh, bits of furniture outside, and uh, you can you can use the furniture to sort of date the. Uh, how to date the piece you have this this, this sort of heavy legged uh, candle stand it's a western style table which is interesting on, on here uh, you don't see that too often on Chinese lacquer uh, and uh, the people boats all kinds of activity this was probably made during the middle of the uh, of the uh, 1800s roughly uh, judging by the furniture and the style that, that are in this the things that are in the scene here you have one of those tables again uh, that is a European form. This is not something you would typically find um, in a Chinese home. But um, foreigners in China had furniture that looked like this, and I, I suspect that the uh, lacquer decorators were more than happy to adopt it uh, to please uh, customers. Um, so there they are. And all these figures, nowhere, anywhere, and dragons all around the, the piece framing it, all around the outside. There were repeats of dragons. And you've got these nice invected corners that come in very gracefully done beautiful piece <clears throat> this is a, a rare example and it's up to 471 dollars and it should it should go for oh 1600 to 2500 uh because it's it's a, in in pristine condition and is interesting and has loads of detail top this is a plus quality uh for chinese export lacquer all right and then over here to this, this is a very rare form of tea caddy. You'll notice it has a wooden stand that goes under it. You never see those. Typically what you see are the wooden feet attached just to the bottom of the box, or the box has no feet at all because it got knocked off, or they have brass feet, which were often the, were used as replacements. But the originals for all of these always came with wooden feet. And this, this has a beautiful pair of paw feet on there, it has the original pewter liner and interior and all that uh, to put the tea in. And a uh, nice scene on the top, nowhere on the top, which is almost a miracle. And you have this uh, vine and uh, grape leaf sort of uh, pattern running around it. And these rondelles of portraits um, on each corner um, going around the piece. A really, really fine example. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's in absolutely great condition. And it's up to $390. And again, sh you know, if you have to pay $1,500 or $2,000 to get it, pay it. Uh, because you, if, you, if you're a lacquer collector, uh, think about when was the last time you saw one with a wooden stand, with a shaped top like this, and in this condition, with that fine a detail. That's, that's where all the money is. It's not just because it's a lacquer box. It's because of how good it is. And this, again, is another one of those, these A-plus examples. 
So um, uh, don't be afraid to uh, uh, chase it if you're a collector of these things because it's a good one. And all of this will be on the uh, newsletter page over on Bit'em Out uh, 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 this week. They'll be there by the time you see this video because we'll put them up, get them over there. All righty. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, those of you that are on the global pages, check out those that sale tomorrow of, of, of the uh, Chinese export wares and the new, the new Chinese export auction that's up there. Some very, very fine examples, especially the one that just got listed is in a few weeks, but there's some extremely rare candlesticks on there, which I think are terrific. So uh, that's what's going on. All righty, and uh, leave a comment, uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos, and uh, we'll be back next week with some more, uh, and have a wonderful weekend, and the thunderstorm is just starting here. <laughs> right on time. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.